Hey everybody, Jim Ross here with Daniel Defense, and today I want to talk to you about basic weapons maintenance. Um, it's that necessary evil. Uh, I'm very guilty of this. I love to go out to the range and shoot. I love to go out and, and, and send rounds down range. Uh, my least favorite part of that is cleaning. However, it is something that is an absolute necessity to ensure that your gun is cycling properly and is is constantly going to be reliable. There's been a lot of questions out there of, hey, how do I properly clean my weapon? What's proper lubrication look like? Today, we're going to cover all of those things in a very basic video. Uh, please understand that we do know there's a million different ways, a lot of techniques out there that people use. Uh, you may not use these exact techniques that I'm going to show you, but this is how I clean my gun and I keep my gun uh, operational. First thing that I want to do Number one is to make sure I'm safe. You can see I'm wearing some rubber gloves. I've got my uh, eye protection on. My firearm is clear. I've, I've made sure it's clear and safe. So what I'm gonna do here, I've got my chamber flag. I'm gonna go ahead first and lock my bolt to the rear. Remove my chamber flag and then visually inspect the chamber of the rifle to ensure that it is clear and it is clear. So at this point, what we wanna do is we wanna get this thing apart. We wanna take the upper and the lower apart. I wanna get the bolt out. I wanna get all these pieces out that I need to clean. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna take my chamber flag and I'm gonna push out my pivot pins and then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna pull the pivot pins out. What that's gonna do is it's gonna separate your upper and your lower receiver group. So what I like to do is focus on one piece at a time. I'm gonna come here to my lower receiver group, push back on my buffer, push down on the buffer retainer pin, and then remove my buffer and buffer spring. So I'm gonna take that out and I'm gonna set it aside. I'm gonna put my lower receiver group over here out of the way. Next thing we wanna do is get our bolt and bolt carrier group out of the upper receiver. We're just gonna grab the, the charging handle here and kind of guide that bolt out with our hand. Once we get it here, I'm gonna grab my bolt and I'm gonna remove it from the firearm. And then I'm going to grab the charging handle and remove it. Now that we've got it broken down here, we need to get into our bolt carrier group. What we have here is our firing pin retaining pin. I use a handy dandy little metal pick here and just kind of pull that out. Now it is imperative that you do not lose these small parts. Uh, you see I have a big, clean working surface here to ensure that I don't lose any of those parts. Uh, I'm gonna put that on the table. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just give this bolt a nice sturdy whack on the table to get my firing pin out of the bolt. All right, at this point, we're ready to remove our cam pin. So obviously the cam pin for you folks that don't know is that uh, rectangular pin that flows back and forth in the bolt carrier group. And what that does is it helps that bolt turn when it's going, when the, the rifle is functioning. So I'm gonna take this thing and I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take it and give it a whack in my hand. And now my cam pin is out of the bolt carrier and bolt. So next thing I'm gonna do is remove my bolt. So this is what you would need to do for basic weapons maintenance after a day at the range. Now let's talk about some of the tools we're gonna to use while we're cleaning our weapon. Now, this is where this gets extremely particular. A lot of folks are uh, brand loyal. There's a number of different lubricants and cleaning solutions on the market. Guys, what I'm gonna tell you is make sure that you're using a quality lubrication that is intended for firearms cleaning. The next thing that is absolutely imperative to have is a nice cloth to wipe your stuff down. I like to use some uh, Q-tips. Here I have some kind of medical grade Q-tips like swabs, a nylon, brush or a toothbrush. If you've got an old toothbrush laying around the house, that'll, that'll suffice. Um, I have a plastic dental pick uh, that I can use to get into those hard to reach places. Some folks like to use these, these bone bolt cleaners. They're a really handy little tool to knock off that heavy buildup. You can use these little dental picks, these metal dental picks. One thing that I will urge to everybody out there is the last thing you want to start doing is wrenching on your metal with other metal parts. What that's going to do is it's going to remove finishes that are on the outside of those components and will cause eventually for you to expose the raw material and that's the last thing you want to do. So if you're using something that's metal like this pick, make sure you're being very ginger with it and you're not scratching through the surface of whatever it is you're cleaning. The next tool that I really use and a lot is our bore snake. Um, some of you guys may run patches or a rod through your, your bore, that's fine. You can do that, but if you're just looking for basic weapons maintenance, these bore snakes are absolutely phenomenal and are a great tool to use. 
And then last but not least, for super heavy buildup, if you have a gun that is absolutely caked, if you're shooting suppressed like this firearm here, and you have a gun that's absolutely filthy, gun scrubber is a great option. What that does is it gets in there and it breaks down the heavy built up carbon that you get on your bolt and your bolt carrier group or on your muzzle device, breaks it up, allows you to remove it. And then but what you immediately wanna do is follow that with some oil. Uh, that actually will pull all of the moisture out of that material and make it very bone dry. You wanna make sure you lubricate thoroughly after using any amount of gun scrubber, okay? All right, so let's get into cleaning. We're gonna start with our buffer, right? Our buffer here you can see is extremely filthy. All I'm gonna do is take my cloth and I'm just gonna give it a quick wipe down. Get all that black carbon off there, get it nice and shiny again, nice and clean. Doesn't take any time at all, relatively simple. And there you go, that's about the extent of what you need to do on that buffer. Next thing I wanna do, and I like to, you know, get the outside of my spring, just give it a quick wipe down. And then if you wanna get real nitty gritty, take this cloth and run it in that spring and then just kind of twist it, right? So the goal is guys, for this type of cleaning, we're not trying to get this thing white glove inspection ready. We're just trying to get it clean enough to go back in the safe for the next time we head out to the range. Go ahead and get that spring nice and clean. Once we've done that, you can see the spring's nice and clean now. You know, when you're doing this, it doesn't hurt to maybe do a little bit of inspection on the firearm. Make sure your spring doesn't have any cracks. Give it a little bend, kind of twist it, visually inspect that spring. Make sure it has some spring left in it. A lot of times folks will uh, run a gun for a couple years through a couple, you know, 10, 15,000 rounds, and the spring will actually lose a, a little bit of its luster. So check that spring, make sure it has good spring tension in it, and, and it's not a bad thing to do while you've got it out of the gun. Uh, the next thing we wanna do is clean the receiver extension. The receiver extension is where your buffer and buffer spring live. So obviously you get a lot of buildup in there. If you have uh, at your disposal a uh, can of compressed air, it's a really good tool. You can take that compressed air, put it up in there, hit it a couple times, it blows out any dirt, debris. For the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna use my rag. I'm gonna take this thing and I'm kinda gonna twist it up a little bit, get a little ball started here. And then I'm just gonna kinda thread it in there and run that cloth all the way up into that receiver extension. Again, what I'm doing is just trying to get out any heavy buildup that's that's in there that's kind of nasty. So once we get that up in there, and again, it's it, it's a little bit of a pain in the neck, but once you get it going, it'll feed in there nicely. Uh, you could also take your nylon brush and run it up in there uh, and clean out any of that debris. We're gonna just give it a couple twists and then pull it out. And you see a little bit of carbon that falls out of there. So there is gunk. Now, when we look down in that receiver extension, it's nice and clean. Uh, and, and clear of debris. The next thing you could do, and this is not absolutely necessary every time you go out to the range, but it's something worth looking at. Look down into your uh, fire control group, make sure there's not any excessive buildup. If there is excessive buildup, all you wanna do is take a, a, a clean Q-tip and kinda get down in there, clean out your springs, clean out your sear, make sure everything down in there is nice and clean. So at that point, go ahead and put that down. That is the lower receiver group. The, the one thing you wanna do prior to reassembly is take a little bit of this CLP. Now I gotta just put it straight on my hands here and then I'm gonna lube up that, that spring just to make sure it's nice and lubricated. It's not too much oil, just enough to give it a little bit of a sheen. So that's that, we're done with the lower receiver group. We can set that aside out of the way, making sure we're not losing any of our parts, okay? All right, now we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes of the gun, hearts that are gonna have the heaviest buildup on them. Uh, we have our bolt carrier group here. Uh, the bolt carrier group tends to be extremely dirty. Um, you're gonna see we've got a lot of buildup. First thing I'm gonna do is just knock off all that heavy carbon buildup, right? There's a number of different ways you can do this. You could hit it with oil first and then wipe it off. Uh, I just like to hit it with the, the towel real quick, get all the heavy buildup out of all these travel paths on the bottom, all these little nooks and crannies, just hit them real quick with a dry rag. Next thing we're gonna do, we've gotta get back up into where the bolt lives here in the front of the bolt carrier group. This is where this little bone tool comes in real handy. All you gotta do is take that thing, feed it up in there, and you're just gonna push and give it a couple twists. So basically, on the back side of this, where this thing is stopping, there's a shoulder there that collects a lot of carbon. It likes to build up there. Um, and what that eventually do over time is as you build that up, if you don't clean this, it's actually gonna push that bolt further and further out until it impedes the function of the bolt. So you don't wanna do that. Make sure you get in there and knock this carbon out of there. And I'm gonna knock on the table and I can see visually see carbon falling out of there. Looking down in the light, it looks pretty good. What I would do at this point, and again, Keep in mind, whenever you're using metal on metal, you wanna be ginger with it. You don't wanna be really wrenching in there. But I'm gonna get in there. I can see a couple of spots where there's a little bit of carbon built up still. So I'm just gonna give a little 
scrape and knock off some of that carbon. Not too crazy. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do, same thing here, and I again, you can use your Q-tips. Uh, I'm gonna take this rag, bundle it up, and just kind of twist it into that bulk hair group. And this is gonna wipe out all those sidewalls. That's pretty good. It looks nice and clean in there. No more carbon buildup. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with that one. Now on the back side, we're gonna do basically the same thing. Kind of just take my, my metal pick, again, nice and easy. Go around here and knock off heavy carbon buildup, and then just give a little tap on the table. And then same thing here, I'm gonna run my cloth into there, kind of twist it, and run it right down that whole length, cleaning those sidewalls. Again, we don't need to get too crazy with this, guys. This is <clears throat> one of those parts that, yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna have a lot of buildup on it, but uh, not really super essential to the cycle, or the function of the rifle, but we wanna make sure it's still clean uh, in, in that firing pin, especially on the, the back side of this here. We'll make sure that firing pin has the ability to move forward. Uh, again, if you don't clean that, your firing pin's here, you get a lot of buildup, you end up starting getting light primer strikes. If you haven't cleaned your gun, you're getting light primer strikes, that's your first culprit right there is in this bolt carrier group. Make sure you're cleaning that. You may run into some places on the bolt, like the bolt face here, if you got some heavy carbon buildups, you can take your nylon brush and just hit it with a nylon brush a couple times. Knock off that buildup, make sure it's clean. And any of these little crevices, kind of hit it with your brush, and that's gonna knock off everything you need. So that right there is a clean bolt, ready to be lubricated. We'll do that at the end once we reassemble the bolt carrier group. The next part we're gonna wanna do is our bolt. I am going to actually remove the uh, extractor. Uh, in order to do that, I'm gonna put downward pressure on the back side of the extractor, right? Right here where it used. I'm gonna use my thumb and put downward pressure on. This here, I'm gonna utilize my firing pin with downward pressure on the back of the extractor. There's a small pin right here that I'm actually gonna push out side to side. Again, critical component, do not lose this part. Grab my fingers, there we go, and take that out. I'm gonna put it over here with my other small parts. Now, if you've got something at home, this is a great little tool you can have. I'm not utilizing it for this video, but this is a magnetized bowl. You can see it's got a bunch of little components in it. If you got one of these at home or you wanna go online and buy one, really handy little tool to have. Keep it right here on your desk. Uh, but for here, I've got a nice clean work surface, so I'm just gonna stick to having it on the table. So now that I've removed the extractor uh, retaining pin, I'm gonna remove my extractor. The extractor, again, is a very small part. Uh, the Daniel Defense extractors have an O-ring extractor booster on there. Make sure that you do not lose that small rubber O-ring extractor booster. So now that I've got this off, I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning it. Again, I'm gonna use my nylon brush here and just kind of give it a good rub down, knock off all that heavy buildup on all surfaces. If you run into anything super excessive, you can use your pick. One place you wanna make sure is on the inside of this extractor, you've got that open channel. That's where it actually grabs around the backside of the casing. Make sure that is clear of debris. You can do that with your pick. Just kind of run that pick through there. I'm gonna use the metal here again, nice and easy. I'm not going hard on this. I'm not scratching the finish. I'm just removing all of my buildup and then I'm gonna hit it with my wire brush. All right, now that is clean, I visually inspect that is, there's no more carbon built up in there. And then I'm just gonna to continue to hit this with my nylon brush to remove any buildup. I'm gonna set that aside with my other small parts, making sure not to lose it. Next thing I wanna do is clean this bolt. Bolt is filthy, so I'm gonna start on the back side. This is where the bone tool comes in handy. On the, the front of this bone tool, there's an opening. It's actually intended to go down over the back side of your bolt. Just take it in there and run it right around the outside of this thing. What that's doing is you tend to get a lot of buildup back here on the back of the bolt, and it's really heavy uh, buildup. You get a lot of brass fouling in there, so that thing helps to clear that off. So once we got all the heavy buildup knocked off the back of this, you'll be able to see the brass fouling and stuff. You know, just go ahead and hit that with your brush, make sure it's clean and you're good to go there. While we're here, let's look at our gas rings. Let's make sure, first and foremost, we have three, uh, that they're not stretched out, that they look like they're in good working condition. It's normal when you take them and kind of wobble them side to side, they're gonna have a little bit of play in there, that design. You will notice there's little spaces in there that's normal, that's the way they're designed. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move down the bolt and just continue to hit it with our nylon brush. We wanna make sure we're getting all that heavy buildup off I'm seeing little flakes of carbon knock off here and just continue to hit it so it's nice and clean. 
and then we will hit each one of our bolt lugs and we're good to go. So that is a nice clean bolt. So at this point, what I'm gonna do before we move on is reassemble our extractor. So you're gonna put your O-ring extractor booster, put it in the back and again, applying downward pressure right here at this U, I'm gonna line up those holes visually. I'm gonna take my pin and slide it right back in here. And this can be tricky, you know, make sure you just play with your tension on the back of it. When you put that pin in, so make sure it's nice and flush and uh, you're good to go on your bolt. So that's clean bolt. All right, next we're gonna work on our firing pin. Firing pin's really easy, guys. All you gotta do, take a cloth, give it a quick once over. And then here on the back side of the firing pin, you're gonna notice a lot of heavy carbon buildup. Uh, a couple ways you can do this. You can use this bone tool. It's got a handy little uh, accessory right here. You just drop your firing pin in and then give it a couple twists. Put your thumb down on there, and twist it a couple times. Uh, what I like to do personally is take, again, my pick and just gently scrape off all this. Last and not least is the upper receiver group itself. A lot of surface area in here. Uh, this is where you're gonna really wanna use your nylon brush, kind of get into those channels, kind of just run your nylon brush in there, kind of break everything up. Definitely don't wanna neglect your chamber here. You wanna make sure you get your chamber nice and clean. I'm gonna show you how to do that and how I do it. But first and foremost, I wanna knock some of this carbon off and kind of bang it out of there. There we go. Next thing we're gonna do is the chamber. So you can use a regular Q-tip, you can use dental Q-tips. What I like to do is put a little pool on my work surface here of some CLP. Again, this is just a normal uh, lubricant. Works great, keeps the gun running fine. I'm gonna put some CLP on the end of that Q-tip and then I'm gonna run it up into my chamber. And you will see once I come out of here, the amount of buildup that I have on this Q-tip from that chamber. Once we've hit that with the with the Q-tip, you could probably afford to go in there a couple more times. Again, doesn't have to be flawless. It just needs to get cleaned enough to go back in the safe and, and ready to go back out to the range. And then I'm gonna run one more Q-tip through with some lube on it. And that's about the extent of it, right? We're gonna make sure it's clean. And, it, and this is already lubricating the chamber, which is a good thing, so. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit the inside of this upper receiver group. Again, lubrication on the Q-tip. And I'm just gonna run it through this upper receiver group. Knocking off any excessive buildup, making sure it's nice and clean. So as you can see, I've knocked out a bunch of the, the dirt and, and grime and, and carbon buildup on the inside of this upper receiver group. Uh, me personally, if this is my gun, I'm satisfied with this cleaning. Uh, the only thing I'm gonna do next is really quick. If you want, you can hit your muzzle device. Um, if you have a standard birdcage flash hider, uh, really not necessary to clean this, but if you're cleaning, this is a DD Wave uh, suppressor brake, you wanna make sure you just kinda hit that, uh, knock off some of that heavy buildup, and uh, maybe hit it with some lubrication to keep it uh, nice and clean. Um, you could also at this point on this one, because it is such heavy buildup, use a brass brush. They sell a brass brush that's identical to this. Uh, heck, they sell one that has nylon on this side and brass on this side. Go out and get you one of those and just hit this with that brass and knock off that heavy buildup. Last thing we're gonna do is clean our cam pin. So really quick, this is simple. All we're gonna do is take our cam pin, give it a quick wipe down and do all these little small components. So we got our cam pin and our firing pin retaining pin. We're just gonna give them a quick wipe down. Once that's done, We'll hit our firing pin retaining pin. And that's all you gotta do, guys. So now that we've done a little bit of lubrication in here, what I wanna do real quick is run a bore snake through my bore. Uh, you know, on a 5.56 AR style rifle, it's not absolutely absolutely imperative to clean your, your bore every single time you shoot. Um, but after shooting, uh, you know, a couple hundred, maybe 500 rounds, you wanna just go ahead and run a bore snake through there. I like to run it through the same way the bullet travels through the gun. So I'm going from the back through the front and I'm gonna do that maybe two or three times, run that through there just to ensure that I'm knocking off all that heavy buildup and getting that bore nice and clean. Next thing I'm gonna do is just hold this thing up to the light and inspect my bore and everything looks clean. It's nice and shiny. I don't see any excessive buildup. So I am happy with that for being clean. So now that we've got the gun completely clean, we've got our upper receiver group clean, we've got our lower receiver group clean, it's time to reassemble the firearm. So again, I stick to what I did. I'm gonna start from the back and work my way forward. So reassembly, take my buffer uh, in my already pre-lubricated buffer spring. So when you push this buffer into the spring, you're gonna hear a little click here and that spring should hold your buffer in place. If it doesn't hold it in there, it's time to replace your buffer spring. All right, all we're gonna do is take our spring, 
and feed it into the receiver extension and push it in until that buffer is held in by the buffer retaining pin and you're good to go. All right, that is all you need there. On the upper receiver group, I like to take my upper receiver group, place it with the bottom facing towards me, get my lubrication, and I'm gonna put about five or six drops of lubricant right in that path on the bottom there. At this point, I'm gonna take my Q-tip and I'm gonna spread that lubrication all over throughout the inside of that receiver. This is, you know, anytime you gotta think of this as an engine, guys, it's, it's metal on metal. You gotta make sure your gun is well lubricated. If it's not well lubricated, you can just go ahead and guarantee you're gonna have a malfunction next time you're out at the range. So make sure you lubricate it, uh, or if not worse, you're gonna have premature wear and tear on your parts and you're gonna be replacing things sooner than you have to. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to our bolt. So we have our bolt, bolt carrier group. We're gonna go ahead and put that bolt back in the gun. We are going to turn it so the bevel is away from us. Um, so basically you're gonna take the, the, the bolt, you're gonna put it in, twist it, put it in so it lines up and you're gonna take your cam pin and you're gonna drop it back into the bolt carrier group. So drop that back in there. And this takes a little bit of lining up guys. Once you get it lined up, that thing will drop in there nice and clean. What you wanna do at this point is the cam pin has a hole through it where your firing pin travels through. You wanna make sure that you turn this thing back 90 degrees so that rectangle is sitting side to side and it's not running parallel with the, the bolt. Um, now you're ready to go ahead and put your firing pin back in the bolt carrier group. You're gonna take your firing pin. What I like to do is I'll cover this channel with my fingers here and then I just take the firing pin and drop it in. I'm gonna go ahead and push it forward and let it fall in. It should fall in there nice and cleanly. And the last thing we're gonna do is put in our firing pin retaining pin. Now, this is important. If you don't have your firing pin all the way seated forward and you put this bolt, uh, firing pin retaining pin in, it will cause the weapon to not fire. So make sure you push that firing pin all the way forward and then you're gonna go ahead and just take your firing pin retaining pin, put it back in the hole. One thing you can do to check to make sure that you've installed that properly once it's in the bolt carrier group is take this thing and hit it on the table. If your firing pin doesn't fall through, you're good to go. One more check here for function. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull the bolt forward in the bolt carrier group, and we're gonna set it up on the table. If it holds itself up and doesn't fall down, when I say fall down, meaning that, uh, that means that your gas rings are good. If you put it up here like this and it immediately chunks back down to the table, you may wanna look at getting your gas rings replaced uh, because they're a little loose. It, it will eventually affect the cycle of your rifle. One thing here, we've got our, our uh, charging handle. Not a whole lot of dirt and muck on this one. What I'm gonna do real quick, put a little bit more lube on my table here, get a Q-tip and just kinda give this thing a once over. Make sure it's nice and lubricated. Um, when I say lubricated, guys, you wanna see a little bit of a sheen. And what you can do here is, now you wipe it down, I just take a little bit of lubrication and just hit it real quick. Get it nice and slick. So now that we've lubricated our charging handle, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall it back into the upper receiver group. There are two protruding parts here on the charging handle. We're gonna make those line up with the cuts in the upper. We're gonna drop that in and push it partially into the rifle. At this point, we have to lubricate our bolt and bolt carrier group to make sure that they're gonna cycle properly. And what I do here is I go crazy with it, guys. You don't have to do it this way, but especially if I'm gonna be storing it for a longer period of time. I have three kids at home, so I don't always get to get to the range as quick as, as much as I want to. So I, I leave my guns really wet when I put them back in the vault to prevent rusting, especially down here in South Georgia. I put a liberal amount of, of oil on the bolt and I just take it and rub it all over with my hands. I like this thing to be wet, guys. It, it, there's no, in my opinion, when you're storing it, uh, you know, for longer periods of time, there's not too much oil you can put on there. Now you don't want it dripping off, obviously, but you just want to get it spread out and make sure any part where you see that there's a metal to metal contact, and you'll know because you'll see some of that finish rubbed off, just make sure you get that nice and lubricated because that is a point where it is hitting other metal parts. So now that I've got the outside of this thing nice and wet, I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of drops right on the crease here where my bolt actually goes into the bolt carrier group. I'm gonna put one on this side, I'm gonna put one on this side, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just cycle that bolt back and forth a couple times. Make sure it's feeding down into that hole and, and keeping that bolt cycling properly. All right, at that point, that is what your bolt should look like when you're putting it back in your gun. Again, it's not dripping off of it, but it's not dry. There's no dry part on this bolt and it, it uh, is ready to go back in the safe or go back to the range. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull my bolt forward in the bolt carrier group. I'm gonna go ahead and insert the bolt 
face into the back of the receiver and make sure my gas key is falling into the charging handle. At this point, I can go ahead and push it forward and that bolt is installed. Last but not least, we're gonna go ahead and reassemble the upper and lower receiver group. It is important to make sure that your takedown pins are pulled out to the side. All you're gonna do is make that back up, go ahead and push in your takedown pins and you've got a clean rifle. What I do every time before I put my rifle away is a quick functions check, right? Function check is just to make sure that I put everything together properly. I didn't mess anything up during the cleaning process. So charge the weapon with the rifle on safe. With the rifle on safe, you're gonna go ahead and try and pull the trigger. It doesn't fire. I will then move the selector lever from safe to semi. I'm gonna pull the trigger and hold it, right? At this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna charge the rifle and I'm gonna let go of the trigger. You will hear a metallic click when I let go. That's good to go. Finally, I'm gonna go ahead and charge the rifle and put it on safe. That tells me that I have done everything properly when disassembling and reassembling and cleaning this rifle. Now that we've cleaned our rifle, it's ready to go back into the gun safe or head back out to the range. Guys, we really appreciate you tuning into this video. If you have any questions, come visit our website at www.danieldefense.com or give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Make sure you comment below with any other questions you might have.